Yo, what is up guys? My name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to 100 Days of Code, day number two. Today we're going to make a calculator app, but before we do that, I want to say thank you for all the support I got on my first video. In the first 12 hours we broke any record of any of my other videos previously, which is a massive personal record for me. And it's still going now up on the 24 hour mark, so that is absolutely amazing. I thank you all very much. Um, next up... We are, I want to get all your feedback. So in the comments, if you want a specific, if you want me to do some sort of code, like I've got a lot of requests for C Sharp, if you want that, say it in the comments, because I plan on doing some C Sharp videos soon. Um, if you want, and there's anything specific you want, like React or anything, or even specific projects, like how to make a website, because that is one of my things I probably should do. Um, how to make a mobile app. Uh, it probably would be React Native if we were doing mobile app. I'm not very good at uh, Swift or uh, I think it's called Kotlin or any of or Kotlin C. I think Kotlin C, one of the pieces of software it uses. But anyway, other than that, let's get on with the rest of the video. But let me know in the comments. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and let's crack on with it. So, to start us off, we have the, I've set up the basics, just empty files. So this is the index.html. Uh, before we create that, that's in the root folder. We have the, we have an assets folder with inside fit CSS, JS, and SAS. Uh, again, we will be using SAS. It is a CSS precompiler. Or, oh God, one sec, sorry. Mute my phone for you. Um, so yeah, we'll be using SAS and JavaScript, we've set this up, again, all files are empty, and I'm using the VS Code, uh, VS Code text editor made by Microsoft. Um, here are all my, my things, I'm using the material theme for this, with the material icon theme, so the icons you see are material. We're using Live Surfer and Live SAS compiler to do everything we need all in this one all in this one. Uh, text editor. It's very good. It's one of the best ones, I believe. I've tried out many, like Atom and Brackets and all of the following. None of them seem to be very good. And as it is free, it is really good for a free tool. And its predecessor, Visual Studio, is also a great tool as well. I use that when I'm creating games in Unity. Uh, so let's crack on. So first of all, we're using Emmet as well, which is built into VS Code. All I did there is press exclamation mark and hit enter, and it gave me the boilerplate for a web document. We'll call this one Calculator. So title, as usual. Uh, we're going to link the CSS straight away. So we go here, we're going to go, oh, no, 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 no. Assets, CSS, and main.min.css, pal. So we got that in there. So all this does is reference our CSS in here, so anything we write in here will relate to this. Uh, next up we want to incorporate the script, so we want to go script source, and we want to write in here, assets forward slash js forward slash main, yeah, there we go. Now that is all sorted. Um, so to test this, let's write hello world in here, go to our thing, hit that, boom, hello world, oh. And it has got our calculator. If we press I now, this favicon will always show because we don't have a favicon in our file directory. And this is no issue. Um, everything else is all sorted. I believe now if we delete that and save, it reloads for us. Yes, yeah, so this is really cool. So it'll reload for us, which is an awesome tool. Um, okay, let's crack on. So let's create a wrapper called app. Or idea, yeah, app, that's good enough. Uh, this will hold all our stuff. Then we're going to do a calculator wrapper just so that will get it so we can style it up a little. And next, we need to create the display. So the calculator display. I am using BEM, uh, it is a way of writing CSS code. Uh, BEM sty styling naming style naming. It's a naming convention for this, so doo -doo -doo -doo, let's just go to introduction quickly, just show you. So 
If you want to read that, it's better. Or if you want to just come here and read how you use Ben, why is get why is it called get better? Oh, there you go. That makes it easier. So there you go. It is a. It basically is just a way, a standard way of writing CSS code and naming constructions for your CSS. Helps a lot. It makes I think a lot easier to do, and that means when more people come around to use your code, they can. Um. Okay, let's continue. So calculator, calculator display. Um, ID of uh, display. And then, so this is where our what what we write in will display. Uh, next up, we're going to create a bunch of buttons, but we need to create a grid for this. So we're going to call this uh, cal calc. We should call it calc. Yeah, let's short it down to calc. Just so oh, a bit later, you see, calc uh, calc buttons or what I call actions actions. Boom. Uh, so this will be where we store our buttons. Next up, we will add in here button. Uh, how are we styling this? Let me just think in my head because I have not done any uh, pre-code for this. So if I make any errors, I think you'll be seeing it firsthand. So if we go here and we write calc underscore underscore. Why is this button? Uh, we need a button and it needs to be. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. We also need a plus, def times, defied, and equals buttons. And I think we also need a clear. Uh, so let's create clear first. So button, button, dot clear, hashtag. Uh, no, that's fine. Clear. And then we're going to add a data attribute called action. And this is going to say clear. Uh, and I believe that's fine, burn, and then in here it will say C, because that is what the clear button normally says. And then this will be a backspace. Uh, so if you want to delete one uh, value, we'll go clear, and we'll call it backspace. And that is C, E, normally on calculate, I believe. Oh. After backspace, we would normally have, so along the top we've got clear, uh, and I think that is it. I think that is fine for the first two buttons on there. Uh, and then what would be on the next one? So we'll say it would be times. So this will be multiply, apply, not pull. Multiply. We just need to, no, nah, we'll use direct. And then divide. plus and minus. Now let's rename these minus. Uh, subtract, we'll call it subtract. Just a proper term for it, not minus. Subtract, this is addi addition. Addition or adds, I'm going to call it adds for simplicity. And now those buttons sorted. I feel like we need to group these in sections so we can lay them out properly but for now we'll keep them quite simple, styling be quite simple. Next up we want button dot uh, what am I doing? I could just duplicate. Uh, and then we're gonna call this one one uh, we'll call it one action one and this will be one uh, this will be Okay guys, we are back, so we have all our buttons in here now. Um, so we have the clear to remove fill, we have backspace, we have multiply, divide, add, subtract and calculate, which equals, uh, and then one, to, one all the way through to nine, uh, zero and zero, don't forget about zero. I was going to say all the way through to zero, but that doesn't make sense because zero should be a star, but on a calculator it's at the bottom. Yep, calculator's cool like that. Okay, so we've got that. Let's have a look what this looks like. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful, guys. There we go. That's the styling done. <laughs> no sass needed. Okay. Uh, body margin. Zero. Uh, background. We're going to give it F3, F3, F3. Because I like that nice, not so dark white. Less on the eyes, basically. Uh, next up. We want to grab the calculator, and we, oh, well, we want that, and we want to display 
flex, because flex is always our friend, justify content center, align item center. So it's going to just center it to the middle. We also want to go width 100 VW and 100 fed, uh, viewport height for the height calc. So for the calc layer, we are going to add a background of oh, what's it called background color. Let's think of one. It's going to be a cool kid background. Uh, we're going to go for a we're going for a dark themed because everyone likes dark themed stuff. The padding of 1.5 rem. No, we'll go 50 pixels. And I think that is it. Boom. So that's that. Now we want to say we want to say whip. We want to set a whip for this too. We want to say whip. Uh, 420 pixels. How's that look? Uh, maybe a bit smaller. We'll say 380. Not 280. 380. There we go. That's nice. And then. And here we can go and underscore underscore display so that will grab the display here this sass is really good with the bem style so all you have to do is that and it will understand that this is a part of as you can see if i have right for it tells you it is calc underscore display it gets sass um and this will be this will say what was that background what's a paper color i don't really want a paper colored we're gonna go. For, we're gonna go back to the background color for this. Uh, we need to add some padding. Padding, fifteen pixels. But we also want to go margin of minus fifteen pixels because we want it to be this to be edge to edge. Uh, that's also gonna cause issues for the bottom. So we want to go minus fifteen, minus fifteen pixels and zero pixels. Boom. Oh no, we don't want to have that color. F F C E so, so for now, just so I can see where it is. So now it's there. And we don't want any color on the display, do we? Do we? I don't know, guys. What do you think? I want a paper color. I don't want F F. I want F three. Oh no, maybe darker. C four, C four, C four. There we go. That'll do. That'll do for now. We'll do some proper styling later. So I saw it now. I want to go. And underscore underscore actions, and we want to say background. Uh, actually, no, we're gonna keep the background as the dark. We're gonna say padding 15 pixels, and I'm also gonna remove this margin and the padding for this. I'm gonna add it in the actual elements. There we go, that sorts out a bit better. Uh, and then for each button in here, we're gonna say uh, actually, in actions, we're gonna say display flex. That should. Now they're all in line, but we also want to go flex wrap wrap. I'm going to say for buttons, we're going to say flex one. That's going to break them. No, we don't want to do that. Flex. No, I, I'm, I'm using the wrong thing here, aren't I? Uh, we want to say we want to actually set the width to be what we're thinking uh, five fifty. Pixel seems way too much. What about wait? No, because if we think about it, 50 380. So if we do some math, 380 minus or divided by three. See, this is why we need our calculator ready 126. Uh, we take 100. There we go. That's that sorted. Now, if we come in here and we go justify content space around. So that sorts that except from that nine and that thing we need sorting, so we will we will fix that. Or is it space? Uh, yeah, align I align items space uh, okay center. Oh we don't need that. It did nothing. We were making stuff up. So that's that, and then we want to add so width for hundred, and then height thirty pixels. That's a bit better, maybe thirty-five. Uh, and we, all, I also did see uh, web kit appearance. No, there we go. 
outline none border none. Oh, hello. What are you complaining about, Dedus? Oh, I forgot the semicolon. Let's get your semicolon. So that now we want to add a margin of what? 10 pixels around? No, 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 no. Five pixels around. There we go. Look at that. That's nice. Simple but start. Oh, wait a second. Oh, that's not how I envisioned it. Equals needs to go where eight is. Okay, we need to swap one with the five, two, three, and Okay, I see how it is. One sec, my bad. So we wanna, we'll go one needs to go after multiply, so just two, then divide. And after that, bang, all the way. If I wanna put nine onto a line equals down, and uh, swap zero around two. Equals, and uh, maybe we can have the equals and last of type float right. That didn't work, thought it would. Again, it's trial and error, so never, I'm not, some things I do are experimental and I haven't done before. Flexbox is one of those magic things that does all of it for me, and I kind of really want that the bottom to really annoy me. Oh. Okay, where are we at? So our display is there, but we need let's put something in here. Let's put some numbers. Let's say sixteen plus five. Oh yeah, so there we go. So now we need we've got something on the display. We need text align right. That's better. Uh, I'm going to say color is a, a, a. maybe a bit lighter mm. or darker. Sorry, should I say three one three one three one? That's yeah, that's nice and light for us. Uh, what are we doing? So with this row, we want to go border radius top. Uh, just border radius. You want to say 8 pixels, 8 pixels, 0 pixels, 0 pixels, boom. On top of that, oh, I forgot about the background on that. That fixes that. <laughs> Simple fixes. And here we're just going to go border radius because I just like a little curvy effects on it. And we're actually going to change it all. Oh, we're going to go 0 there, 0 there. 16, 16, and we're going to actually no, just 16. Mm, car looks a bit dumb. Yeah, we'll keep it. No took point of changing it now. Uh, so the number button is going to say a white car, but I also want the. I want this to be this an action, but this does sink. So the class what do sink? So I'm just going to change these up so they make sense. Uh, where is multiply? Uh, so nine be cool. So action. So an action button will do something, and this will be renamed to number. We will miss that number, and that means in here we go actions. So, dot. Uh, what do we call it again? Action. I'm going to say background of FFCE 0. zero. Uh -huh. Not really feeling it. I think I need to move the equals. Yeah, I guess it's going to have to be like that. How do I float those ones right? Come here, where are we? In here. Wow, that worked out nice, mate, but it needs to be a bit wider. What are we saying? 105 each? Can we actually... 
calc uh, 380 divided by 3, wait, we're going to wrap this in that, minus 10 pixels. Uh, wait, we need to go. Okay, that is slightly off. Why are you off? What's wrong with my calculator? It's 380 divided by 3 pixels. No, just 3. That's right, isn't it? We've got this whole thing is 380. Oh, it's got a padding of 15. Minus, so that'll be 40. There we go, that's wrong still too. What? How is that wrong? 380 divided by 3, because we want 3 per line. Minus 40, which is 5 plus 5, which is 10. 15 plus 15, which is 30. Am I doing something wrong here? Why am I doing wrong? Mm. Oh, this is, I'm not sure if I'm making this worse or better. Someone answer me. I want it so it's perfectly, so it's the perfect amount of spacing around it. Why if, so what if we move that, added 15 there. So that's that, makes all, oh, but not top, we'll go, we'll go five pixels on top. Yeah, and then, uh, it's still not wide enough, 100% divided by three minus three. Now, right, there we go, that's a bit better, oh, I'll put the front and last one. Okay, this one will be zero pixels, and up here we're going to say padding will be 50 pixels, zero pixels. Oh, boo, you suck. <laughs> there we go, that's, that's good enough, there we go, we got kind of what I wanted. I also want a blank one. Sorry, one sec. And then in here, I want to create dot blank. Oh, it kind of needs to be a button though, don't it? There we go, kind of, but I want blank to be invisible. Dot blank. I want to display. Oh, we can't display them, but we want to go opacity zero. But it's still there. There we go, that kind of makes sense. Well, that's how I calculate this side. There's been a styling video I've never done. I don't focus on styling ever. But while we're at it, we might as well say box shadow. Uh, two pixels, two pixels, eight pixels, zero pixels, RGBA, zero. So, oh, pressing the wrong button. Zero, zero, zero point two five. The border radius. The border radius. Mm. My bad. We'll, we'll, we'll stick to this. This is, this is the calculator. This is our beautiful calculator. It's beautiful and it's worth it. Okay, so now we have to do the actual buttons. Now it's time to sell it all up. Uh, buttons. So I need something to target them in the draft script. Calc, app, calc. There we go. So that's all that's set now. And display is an idea of display. So we're going to set that back to nothing. And let's have a look. Uh, we need to add some. You know what? No, we're not. We're not going to do that. We're going to go into the CSS because CSS does everything. Display. I'm going to say zero pixels on top bottom. We're going to say height 30 pixels, min, maybe 40 pixels. And then we're also going to say line height. 40 pixels. That should maintain its height now. Yes, now it should always maintain its height, although I'm going to make it bigger because that's quite small. I'm going to say 60. Yeah, I like that. Let's continue. So now it's JavaScript time, my favourite time. Uh, we're going to set the actual, every time you click sync, it does sync, except from these two. Uh, so now we're going to go, we're going to create a, we'll call this, uh, what am I doing, let buttons equal document dot get element by ID button, or get class by ID, or get class, 
down to my class and that's it. And then, so now we can, now we've got all the buttons. And if we've got the buttons, we need to loop through them. Or oh, let's get all, let's get all the text. So let's display equal document dot get element by ID display. Okay, so now we've got the display and the buttons. So now if we go buttons dot uh where are we? So dot for I don't think you can for each class names, can you? Buttons dot for each. Oh hello. Arrow functions, ooh. Button. Log button. Yeah, for each, I knew for each wouldn't fit. We have to for loop it. For let i equals zero, i is less than buttons dot length. And go i plus plus so for loop is something called iterates until i is meets this condition so you set a variable here which is i is equal to zero if i is less than buttons uh, dot length so the length of this array uh, i plus plus so it will continue looping through and then we can go here and we can go button uh, no we we'll say let button equal buttons i makes it easier for us to use that more readable um, and now we can log button so they're all oh, hello so now if you look these are all our buttons and they work nice and then now we can create a, a switch so oh, give me that I like all the switch and now we're gonna say button dot class list dot contains action uh, yeah and I'm gonna say true and then else false oh hello uh, false and then we're gonna say log button because that's going to be decent to this one now we're only going to see the buttons which are actions will have actions in them if i open up the console that is so look now we've only got the action buttons so and now if we log in the other one oh god it's auto doing my stuff for me should we keep console open sometimes now we have all the numbers Oh yeah. Uh, okay. So now we want to create a function called. Uh, we're going to start with a number, so we're going to say a function called. What should we call the function? It's going to be called add, and then it's going to be or. In here, we need to check if. Uh, I've only just four something actually. So these top ones and the equal sign aren't normal buttons. We actually want them to do something slightly different. So, actually, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to call this a what do you call it? Why is the ah oh, no? That's on the top of my tongue. You know when you think of something, coffee. What is times the five plus and more add? They are a ref. No, they're operators, right? Okay, guys. I now know what they're called. I had to Google it. They are called operators. <laughs> so we're going to call this an operator. And define operator add operator subtract operator the rest are actions. Um, and then here we need to go to where action is, and we also have to add one called operator. Let's say background, and we're gonna, we're gonna do a slightly different color. What could AF one E two D? No, no, no. No, look, that look ugly. What goes? Ah, uh, for now we're gonna. We're gonna. We're not gonna worry about styling, and we're gonna go. Bam. There we go. So now they are the colors. It's just it makes it easier for us to get those. So now, so if but the class list dot contains operator, then we're gonna call we're gonna call the same function as what we'd call in here, which we need to call. 
concat con cat concat uh, what are we doing concat uh, function concat what are we calling it it's uh, operation and that's what we're going to call it and then we're going to pass through the button concat operation button no we need to go here first So we actually need to do so, so add a fed list, I call it click, so when we click on the button, and going to do this function, which will then have the, that in it, so this will only check if, uh, and else we're going to say, so what you call it, we'll call it action, call action, uh, action call, call action, call action. And we're going to say button again. We want to pass through every button we do because then it will tell us what operation we want to do. And now we're going to create a function called concat operation. And we're going to call this button again because it is the button. That should have been data value. I feel like uh, let me just find and replace to data value. Boom. Oh, it's like. I don't know if I hope that's not a thing. We'll find out. We'll find out. Dot date, uh, no, dot class list dot contains. This is really, we're using this a lot. Dot contains defied multiply. Oh no, just it just needs to be operator. Ah, oh, yes, we did it. Operator. If it contains operator, uh, check if strict. We also need we also need to create something up here quickly. Sorry, we need to say let uh, operation equal. It's gonna be an empty string. You'll find out why near to the end. So we're gonna say if operate. Oh no, wait, what am I doing? No, no, no. We're gonna say so if it's an operator and if not operation log invalid just for me for one sec just so I can test this in fact yeah okay so that checks if the string is empty if the string is empty then it's invalid because we don't want to be able to put a plus or a time so I think at this before we've even put anything in there needs to be a number to start with else upper oh. Actually, we're going to just call this return. And we're going to then, if, not, if it doesn't return, we will go operation plus equal to button dot data. I've also just thought this needs to be the same as what they are in there. That could be fine. I think that should be fine. Back in here, so now we're going to date uh, set dot value. So once that's done, we're just going to return out the function so it doesn't continue following on the code. Uh, but then we're going to write so so that means it's a number if it's not an operator. So next up, we're going to come here and we're going to go button dot data set dot value. Wait a second, if I go down here. Remove that, remove that. So I just checked if that's an operator, and if it is an operator and the string is empty, return else do this. So let's come here, let's apply to this gonna be three plus six is equal to call action, it's not done yet, right yet. So now we need function call action. And it's also going to have the button in it, the button we've placed. And the button we've placed is. So the button, oh, where am I going again? So if it's if data.value, so if button.data set.value is equal to 
uh, calculate there. We're going to log for now. We're going to log the operation. There's that I just want to see what the query is. If we go six plus four is equal six plus four, and then if we did minus five and equal, it will still be minus five. So we need to also after click doing this, we need to go. Uh, okay, let me show some calculations. So now we're gonna I'm gonna show I'm gonna log again, and we're gonna go eval operation. And this needs to be and and not operation. No, and operation, so it's not an empty string. If we go 4 plus 6 is equal to 10. 4 plus 6 is equal to 10. 5 times 2 is equal to 100. Ah, <laughs> my bad, we forgot to. And then after that, it's done, we're going to go operation is equal to an empty string again. Because again, we need to make sure it's clear. So let's do six is equal to six. If it's just six, six plus four is equal to ten. Six times two is equal to twelve. There we go. So that works. Four divided by two. I click two, two is equal to two. Yeah. Now we need to get that in the display though. So here we need to go. Display dot inner HTML is equal to operation. So two plus five is equal to yeah. Uh, oh, and that needs to clear also once we've. Oh no, it don't. When we click equals, then so now instead of doing that, we're going to go. Display dot in a HTML is equal to eval operation. So we go two plus ah, oh, where is my one plus two is equal to three? There we go, that is the basic functionality calculator sorted. Now we just need to get the clear and the backspace sorted. Um, so in call action, uh, we need to return here. Return at the end, just so it doesn't continue writing on the rest of the code. Now we go. I guess still in this, but if dot date, we could have done. We're going to do a switch here as well, because switches just make more sense for these sort of things when they're the same. When you're trying to check the same, the same thing, and now we'll go that. No, no, and there we go. And we're gonna remove that. So it will still work the same for that. And then we're gonna go case or oh, case of uh, clear is equal to, and then break because we want to break it once that's done, so it doesn't continue running through. Go and remove the default for now. We're just gonna remove default from there for now. We don't need it yet. Okay, so now we're on to the clear, and if we click clear, we're going to go up. It literally is just operation is equal to a dead string, and display dot in a HTML is equal to nothing. Again, we're not working. Again, I know people are going to complain saying in a HTML will um, it, it leaves it open to hackers doing stuff, but we don't, we don't, we don't mind. It, it's not. It's a calculator, not a fucking app for NASA. <laughs> so that should work now and I think I'm also going to go here go bam oh pardon me my bad so this is also going to be so uh, this is going to be called backspace isn't it backspace so now if operation so we've got to say operation is equal to plus minus or so I think it's minus uh, it's equal to minus equal to operate no we need to move one string right so we need to now so uh, we're gonna go here and we're gonna go operation dot slice 
uh, one. So we're going to go zero and then minus one. So that'll get the end of the string. That's going to remove whatever the last character was. Um, and then we're going to append that to the screen. Append that to the end of the screen. Now let's move on to testing this. So let's refresh. Let's go five plus four. Oh wait, sorry, five plus five. See the backspace worked. And then when we hit equals, equals 10. Now, if we clear that, it's empty. So there we go. But now if we go one, plus five times four, 21. Now, I'm just trying to, one plus five times, what do we do? Oh my God, I've lost it. One plus five times two, 11. Correct, so that, was, that did five times two, boom. Good, so it does it in the right order too. We back, but we clear. If we do clear and it removes the last layer, it will put the string to an empty string again. Two plus four is equal to six. Uh, let's try divide. So if we do 10 divided by two is equal to five. Uh, subtract. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Now, I'm not. Now, if we did minus five and hit equal to undefined. Oh, burn. So I think when we need to hit calculate, we actually need to set operation to, we need to actually set it to this. And then we just need to log operation again. Because that's what the display is. Oh, hello, why are you guys coming down there? So that's what the display is, and that means if we minus something, so if we so once that is equal to that, if it's equal to six, that is what it is, and then if we clear backspace, that is it. So equals won't clear it because there's no need to clear it after that because it's equal to zero. That's why the minus is. So if we did four minus two is equal to two backspace. Operation slice is not a function. Now we're breaking stuff left, right, and center. We just need to set dival to to string, and then that should fix our slice issue because this is actually, I think this is coming out as an actual number instead of a string, and that's where all our issues are coming from. So now if we go two plus four, equal to six, and then we go ce, that's going to clear it. Nice, there we go. That is fixed now. Great, great news. I believe that is our function fixed. That is exciting. So nine times five is equal to 45. We want a minus four of that, equal to 41. We want a plus three, you know, and we want a times two. And let's clear it. Oh, oh, oh. You know, we can live with that. That is basically just clearing it so it's not there, it's there. Um, well, I think that is it. That's our calculator done. If you have, I'm going to put all this code um, into a repository. Uh, oh, what did I just do? That was an accident. Uh, I'm going to put this into a repository on GitHub. I didn't do that with my last one, and I will try and upload that today. Um, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, then subscribe. And finally, I hope you all have fun and thank you for watching this video. If there's any, oh, actually, wait before we go, before we go, please let me know what you'd like me to do, as in what sort of code. If you'd like me to do a whole project over a few different episodes, like a big project, like a website, or because I still need to redo my own website, that's a good one. I need to do my own website because my website is very old. Should we have a look at my website? It is, it's beautiful, don't go wrong. Look at that animation for it to load in. Boom, this is it. That is my, that's my website, that's it, everything. It just links to my social media page and the contact. That's pretty simple, but if you want me to do more, leave it in the comments, tell me what you want me to do. If you want me to span over a couple of projects, how where you want me to take this series. So uh, so day two, everybody, thank you for watching, and we'll be see you in day three tomorrow.